Good day and welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Inhibitor Danhang, or the Apocalypse Spectrum Banner, in Honkai Star Rail. So this is the, I guess, different version of Danhang, his awakened state, his Inhibitor Lunai state. And he's a very interesting unit, so how he works is kind of similar to Blade in a lot of ways. Uh, except instead of sacrificing health, you sacrifice skill points. So with his talent or his skill, uh, you basically sacrifice skill points to boost the damage of his basic ability. And as you boost that ability, it'll do more single target, but also more adjacent enemy damage, which is very, very important. Now, there's a couple of things to understand, though, before you kind of just go out and consume all your skill points. Uh, firstly, he has a very special uh, little kind of ability uh, which I'm going to mispronounce terribly, but called the Um But basically, these can replace skill points. So if you hit someone with your technique, if you use your ultimate, you basically get pseudo replacement skill points. And these can be used to keep the uptime of his basic attack quite high because obviously if you're consuming three skill points every single time you're going to lose your mind now it's important when doing this that you have a high uptime on his ultimate because his ultimate essentially gives you the ability to refund two points back and allows you to consistently only really consume one skill point for the three point state which is quite important uh, and that basic attack understanding is where things get very important. Now, he also has a couple crit factors in. He also boosts his damage based on the amount of enemies he's hit and on the amount of hits his abilities have done. So maintaining that level 3, that broken spear stage of his basic, is very important for keeping a good uptime on his crit and his damage. In terms of Eidolons, obviously, as with all units, he benefits from having you know, Eidolons in him. But I would definitely say that the biggest one is number four, where his outroar benefit lasts until the next turn. It means that your need for a speed booster like Asta on your team gets dramatically reduced, and instead you can more go on a focal point of just having straight boost units. Great synergy with him includes units like Tigun, who can obviously boost his ability to perform his ultimate, and also Asta, who boosts his overall speed which again, of course, really assists with him getting off attacks and thus maintaining his uptime. Now, outside of that, that's pretty much it, um, realistically speaking. Not too much of an issue. Uh, his technique is relatively useful as well, allowing you to dash and search forward and produce stacks of the pseudo replacement skill points that you'll be able to use to cause damage to the enemy. So, it's all fairly well and dandy. Honestly speaking, he's an incredibly good single target and AoE target kind of damage dealer, but it's maintaining that skill point usage that's going to keep him going. So having low now. skill usage units or units that benefit uh, without having to use or utilize too many skill points is going to be quite imperative when you look at obviously building his team. You can see here the difference between using these skill points. Now you don't have to use them upon selection you can cancel and obviously reset so skill point management is still possible you don't have to dedicate yourself entirely to its usage once selected and you can see pretty big damage but it also increases his overall damage so it's pretty important to maintain those stacks by maintaining those stacks you essentially allow yourself to increase your damage by using his ultimate not only do you now have increased crit rate but you can also use the two pseudo skill points that it gives you to increase your overall damage output. So that maintain of skill point usage and ultimate usage and prioritizing his output damage and his hits is going to be very big in determining how good he operates for you as a damage dealer. You can see again as we max the heaven surge some nice big chunky damage and crits that allow him to do damage to units that don't necessarily have the imagination weak. This is because of the way outroar works. However, overall, honestly I would say he's a pretty good damage dealer. Now, should you summon for him? Well, if you don't have an imagination damage dealer, he's pretty much as close as you get to getting an incredibly good one overall. 
But not only that is the imagination damage good, but the fact that he can do damage through the other opposition's weaknesses because of his crit is also pretty imperative. Overall, I'd say if you are lacking in a good single target damage dealer and you don't have a good crit unit like Seal, you could definitely consider Dan Hang as I feel like he has the requisites to be a solid damage dealer across a multiverse of teams. And although maybe not as good on single target when they don't have the imagination weakness, he still will do very good damage. That's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, take care, stay safe, and yeah, thank you for watching. As always, bye.